Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Club Moffat Talks, our monthly podcast here at Moffat Library. As you can tell, I'm not Chris. Chris is out this week because I think he's having his teeth drilled right now or something. He's at the evil dentist this week. Um, but again, I'm Ryan Samuelson. I am the head of public services here at Moffat Library. And I'm Joseph McNeely, and I am an instruction librarian here at Moffat. And today we have two guests, uh, or three guests. Uh, did you guys wish to uh, identify who you are? Jim, we'll start with you. Oh, am I first? I'm Jim <laughs> Cerno. I am the chair of the Mass Communication Department, and the Wichitan is uh, part of our department, functions out of uh, the second floor of the D-Wing in Thane Fine Arts Center. Um. I'm Cecil Witherspoon. I'm the editor in chief of the Wichita, sitting here in the second floor of the D Wing of the Fane Fine Arts Center. And I'm Tiffany Haggard, and I'm the business manager of the Wichita, and I am not sitting on the second floor of the Fane Fine Arts Center. I I did not know that Fane had a second floor. Only the D Wing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, and, and the D-Wing is is relatively new. Okay. It, it opened six years ago. There, that, there are people who it. still don't even know that that's there. Yeah. Well, I I finished up my degree longer ago than that, so that, that probably explains it. I'm going to duck out for a second because my door is still open, and I think you guys are getting secondary conversations. Give me a sec. Okay. We have these pauses like this, and it's interesting because we think, oh, hey, we'll edit this out. We'll fix this in post. And we don't. Sorry uh, about that. We, I have a lot going on today. We, uh, we, we, we don't edit. <laughs> we, uh, we, when we first did this, I was the editor, and I spent probably 15 hours editing an hour-long uh, podcast because um, I wanted it perfect. Um, and um, we've been dissuaded from trying that. In fact, we've gotten a feedback from people say, um, we like it better when you guys leave the mistakes in. We like it better when you guys leave in your flubs and your and all the things you do wrong because it makes you seem more human. So there, there's something to be said for not being too slick. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. It's Sometimes. better than it used to be. There, I think like the second or third one, I actually had people coming up asking reference questions in the middle of my podcast, which was fun. And by fun, I mean not fun at all. <laughs> well, that kind of gives it an, you know, like a quality like The Office, <laughs> you know, where they're talking to the camera and then someone just comes right into the shot. That's, that's not a terrible aspiration. And speaking of The Office, do we want to go around and talk about what we are currently involved with as far as uh, what we're reading, what we're watching? I'll continue what I said last month. Um, I am an embedded librarian in a number of um, of English classes uh, this upcoming year, and I still haven't read all of the tech, all the uh, all the books that we're studying. So I've got a big stack of books at home on my table that um, I need to get to at some point, and I've, I've either reread or read for the first time for the class, um, but. That's mostly what I'm going to be involved with for the for the next month, basically. Uh, we've been moving things around here in the library. We're not completely finished with our shifting, but a thing that we have completed is we've moved what we call our curriculum materials library. It's our youth literature from pre-K through high school, uh, and that had been on the second floor. It is now on the first floor not terribly far from my office con conveniently. Well, that was the point. <laughs> yes. Um, and in shifting, I discovered a couple of books that I had to grab and read. The one that strictly because of the title I had to grab was this one, which is Monsters Eat Whiny Children. And it's a storybook. It's a quick read uh, by Bruce Kaplan. Um, and it even has a recipe in it, which which I thought was really nice. 
Uh, and then this is a, a book that we actually specifically ordered to get in. Um, and I had heard good things about the book, which is this, When Aiden Became a Brother. Uh, and this is by Kyle Lukoff. Um, and I'd heard good things about it, but I read it myself and I really enjoyed it. It uh, talks about gender issues in a way that I felt was nice and easy to understand. Um, I liked it. It was a good one. Uh, I've been reading the uh, Dresden Files books by Jim Butcher, and I'm on like the fifth or sixth one now. And I just watched the second season of the TV series version of uh, Lincoln Lawyer, which is based on the Michael Connelly book. So I enjoyed that too. How about y'all? Uh, Jim, what have you been reading, watching, doing when you're not going to Europe to teach people? Well, actually, that was going to be my answer because <laughs> um, having just been in London for a month with our study abroad program, uh -huh. um, I will I will make a shameless plug for that right now. Absolutely. Um, but so I'm I'm reading all things London. I bought a photo book uh, called Then and Now, Ooh. which where they they would take a picture of something currently. Well, they had some sort of archive photo and then they would take a photo of the same spot now. Mm -hmm. So there's stuff from 1906 and 1950s and it's it's cool to look at. I am also reading a book about, it's basically about neighborhood tours mm -hmm. where you, you can just walk the neighborhood and see whatever sites there are to see. And then uh, before I left for London, I started a biography of Edward R. Murrow. Oh. So, and it's very, very long and very, very thick, and it'll take me a while. By the way, I'll point out, we're being very academic this week. Usually we talk about the latest Marvel movie or the, the latest Star Trek episode or something like that. So don't, don't feel like you have to be as <laughs> academic as some of us have been. Well, well, actually, part of my answer was going to be what I'm over, and that is Barbenheimer. Uh. <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard just about all I can hear about it. I didn't care about the Oppenheimer movie, and I still don't. Um, and I'll probably never watch it just because of a lack of interest. And I mean, it can be a beautifully told story, incredibly well acted but I just, I don't care. There's a lot of classic movies that I've never watched. And I'm probably never going to, and I won't list them right now because that's not the point. Uh, the Barbie one on the oh, other hand. Oh, good, Joe, because I'll have to tell all the film instructors in the department. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, we, we, we won't do, we Put won't you do on their I naughty say, list, yeah. Uh, I, I cared a little bit about the Barbie movie. I have not seen it yet, but my wife and daughter went and saw it and loved it. So I imagine that I will see that one. I may wait till it gets to streaming. I may not go to the theater for it, but I, I, I think I will be watching that at some point. Well, see, and I have felt guilty about not seeing Oppenheimer because I feel like as an academic, I should. Mm -hmm. But sitting there for three hours, I don't, I don't know if I can do it. Yeah. I mean, I already did that with Waterworld. I mean, is it really going to be a better movie than that? <laughs> Uh, Tiffany or Cecil, what what have you guys been uh, reading and doing? Well, I was going to comment on the Barbenheimer. <laughs> I, I've i never been a Barbie consumer, but I had a friend who wanted to go and we were going to do the experience, but the Oppenheimer movie was sold out. So we did the whole, latest horror movie that was in theaters, which is a little bit more my style. Um, the Barbie movie was okay. It was uh, pretty much what I expected, very comical and very topical. Um, I really liked the new horror movie that was out. I had a feeling it's called Talk to Me, and it's about a hand where if you grab the hand, um, it's I think it's ceramic or something. When you grab it and you say Talk to Me, uh, you get um, possessed, essentially, by a spirit. So it sounded very, you know, uh, stereotypical as far as, like, 
a lot of the horror movies recently, but it had a pretty surprising ending, I guess, that made it stand out a little bit. So I liked that movie more than I thought I would. And I liked the Barbie movie just as much as I thought I would, which was so, so. <laughs> It it seems to me like they missed something by not calling that horror movie Talk to the Hand. <laughs> I agree. That's funny because we had a conversation about bad puns earlier today. Yeah. Yeah. Missed opportunity for sure. <laughs> Cecil? Sure. I feel I feel obligated to comment on Barbenheimer now. And I really I haven't seen either and I don't intend to see either. Um, which I guess puts me in a, a pretty large minority right now. But I have been, I haven't been watching a ton of TV or movies. Um, I've been trying to read a little bit more, which is, uh, it's not exactly my forte, but um, mostly it's just been books about management and stuff like that to, to do with. That's work. perfectly fine too. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. So yeah, that's that's mostly what I've been doing. I've been reading a book called Start With Why about finding purpose in the things that you do and making sure that you know why you do them. Um, and that's really resonated with me. I've enjoyed that quite a bit. And then when I am watching something, it's normally just going to be my sixth or whatever rewatch I'm on now of Community because that's that's my show. So. Six seasons in the movie. Exactly. Six seasons <laughs> in the movie. I'm excited for the movie. <laughs> Here's the part where we get quiet because we don't know what else to say. Uh, I guess we'll start with, um, does someone want to describe what the Wichita is? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll jump on that. Um, the Wichita is, at its, at its most basic, it's a student-run newspaper. So, and it is truly a student-run newspaper. We have our decision, we make our own decisions on what stories we do, how we do them. We take our own photos, we do our own design layouts, and we do our own publication. And it's completely student run. Um, we make our decisions from the top down, we make our own personnel decisions. And every semester, we start over with a new staff. Um, some people will stay on, some people will change. Um, but yeah, that's, that's more or less what we do. I think it's important to throw in here that people people kind of get scared off by the new, the word newspaper, and the the Wichita doesn't do a printed version anymore, and not because it it's kind of gone out of style, but during COVID, you know, no student newspapers were printing a, a printed version because there was no one on their campuses. When we started coming out of COVID, we we had a discussion about do we want to bring back the printed version? Um, and someday I hope we will, but for the moment we are online only. I remember I, as a <laughs> wow, that's a lot of feedback. Uh, I I remember as a, as a student really enjoying the stack of the Wichita and I would look forward to it being there and 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 grabbing it to because there would all inevitably be someone that I knew that was somewhere in the paper with uh polls or you know the man on the street questions the kinds of things that there would be or because of involvement with the theater or various things I I really liked that aspect and and sometimes I'd get the news of, you know, something that I otherwise would not have, have heard about. Um, and yeah, I, I, I loved grabbing that physical copy as a student. Um, yeah, it's convenient to have the online one now. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure that both things are, are, are good in their own way, but there was, I don't know, so, something just tactilely, uh, satisfying about grabbing it off the stack and and that that really speaks to one of my frustrations because when there's a stack it's right there 
and and it you are encouraged to to take one. Now you may or may not read every article. You may just look for, like you said, people you know, or you know, I'm I'm a theater major. I'm going to look for stuff on theater, or I'm an athlete. I'm going to look for stuff on sport, whatever it is. With the online, you know, I I send out a link every time we we publish. I send it to all the faculty and staff, and. You, you may or may not click on that link. You know, I I, I have no doubt eighty percent say, "Oh well, there's that link again." I don't care. Delete. And and I think when you walk past a physical copy, it's a little tougher to to resist. But I and I don't know what to do about that in our our day of junk email and spam and everything else, information overload. Yeah, it, it happens even with important messages. I'll have to send things two or three times to professors because there's such they they love that delete button. They love that. Oh, mm -hmm. this I don't recognize this immediately. Delete. I've got a question. Um, I've been here for 24 years, um, and I one of the things I've noticed is again, um, theoretically, there's a tur there's a total turnover about every four years as far as the Wichita staff goes the theoretically. And I've noticed that the 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 tone of the Wichita changes throughout throughout the decades. I've noticed that very much. Um, mm -hmm. I was wondering if you guys have a certain style or a certain theme or a certain um, mantra that you're going with, or you know that, that what type of stories um, appeal to you guys? What type of stories do you guys want to focus on, as opposed to other stories you could focus on? Yeah. I feel like it's uh it's kind of like how Cecil said every semester or toward the end of every semester we talk about uh, different approaches we can take to um better achieve our goals and one of our biggest goals as of recent have been recruitment and recognition across campus because like without having those physical copies we're very easy not only to ignore but to just miss you know a lot of people just don't even we had somebody come in interview who didn't even know we had a newspaper for her entire first year here so a lot of our focus as far as the content we're putting out has been what do people actually care to see not only on campus but in Wichita Falls so what can we like are we covering the things that people want to hear about and that doesn't just mean you know like are we telling funny jokes or are we telling entertaining stories but the things that matter and getting a good combination of those things you know having some entertainment with the hard hitting news as hard hard hitting as news gets at MSU and trying to cover the sports and the theater and covering all of those bases so everybody's heard and everybody gets to see the things that they want to see do you have anything you want to add to that? Um, I mean, Tiffany, Tiffany pretty much nailed it. Um, like she said, a lot of what we talk about is is recognition and what's going to be recognized. So a lot of the stuff that gains traction for us will be like entertainment based stuff or movie reviews or album reviews or things like that. And that's good. But it also there's there's a balance that we have to strike between, you know, hey, we're putting out this endless stream of content that's really flashy and kind of interesting, but there's stuff happening on campus that we also have to be covering. And so that's one of the things that that I've set as a, as a goal and as a priority is to try and get more, you know, kind of heavy hitting news. Um, I mean, we're going to have to talk about the geese at some point for the Wichita. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because that was that was a big deal. And and really just trying to find those those more impactful stories on campus. That's something that I really want to dig into. And then something that through recruitment, I hope we're able to find more people to dig into. Now I have noticed something in the past. I know there has been pushback in the past. Um, has, have you guys, I mean, I know Jim's aware of some of the pushback from the admin for the witches and that's happened in the past, but have you guys ever received any pushback from anyone here on campus as far as articles you've written at all? No one on staff currently. Um, yeah. I mean, hopefully, hopefully we can get big enough again that we start getting pushback. That would be. That would be <laughs> um, That's the right attitude to have, by the way. <laughs> no, I can't think of anything at the moment. No. And and I would I would take team on on that and the the 
comment about you know the tone of the paper and and how things have evolved over the years you know i've i've been here well we'll just say a little longer than ryan <laughs> and and when i started i was actually wichton advisor and there was a very very heavy push on day to day news all right the board of regents met the the faculty senate met here are the faculty retiring this year. I mean, all those kinds of things. What I think it's evolved to is more, there's still some of that. I mean, Cecil became editor, you know, but what, one day before Dr. Mazacek resigned. Pretty much. <clears throat> right. And so Cecil and I sat down and said, okay, well, you know, you got to get moving on this. You can't ignore it. But Beyond that, I, there's been more on things like race and diversity. Um, I mean, just kind of the bigger issues of, of our day. And I, I think that's one example of, of where being online gives you an advantage. The, the paper version, you just, that much depth would have been a little more difficult. Um, that's true. I hadn't thought about that. Uh, yeah. As far as pushback the last incident i can remember involved a local business that am i right is that the last real That's thing the last um they they had some sort of ambassador program and one of our our students wrote a column saying that all of the ambassadors in that photo were white and that there was just no attempt at diversity. And the uh, the owners of the business didn't take that well. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. But it, would, it was true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's... What leads you... I, what, one thing about the, the hard copy versus the online is I just feel like, you know, stop the presses has more of a ring to it than don't hit the enter button yet. Um, but uh, what what might, what kind of consideration would you have that might lead you to consider not posting a story without without getting into a specific thing, but like, a concern like the effect or whatever what 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 would be a thing that would make you go oh, maybe not that one that's a that's a good question um the number one thing is going to be verification if i have a story and i'm not 100 percent sure of every fact that's in it that's going to be the number one thing that's going to stop me from publishing um other factors that are going to play into that that are going to make that way especially heavily is Obviously, you want to be sensitive about certain topics. Um, there was uh, there was a death of a student last semester, and that was something you have to be really, really careful about because you don't want family members finding out from, you know, a school newspaper. That's something that you want to make sure that you give proper time and proper process to. Um, but yeah, really, just just issues like that, and. Once you get past that sort of thing, there's really not a lot that's going to stop you. You don't, you have the luxury, actually, the, I, I find it very enjoyable to know that I don't have to worry about what higher ups at the university think, because if it's news, it's news and it's going to be published. Um, so, yeah, I mean, really, you just, you try to be sensitive in, in cases where it's, it's not super relevant to the student body and you, you do have to weigh being tasteful there. Um, I don't think I'm articulating this very well, but it's something I have discussed in length with Dr. Cerno in classes and and in conversations. Yeah, and I think on top of that, when we're hitting like harder hitting subjects like that, we go into further discussion, not necessarily about whether or not we should release something, but what's the most beneficial approach to release on this topic. So usually whenever we're having our meetings and we're talking about something like that, a good bit of our discussion goes into 
what what should we be talking about here? Like, what is the news here? And that usually brings us to a point where we're not releasing something that shouldn't be released. I had another question, but it's 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 unfortunately, I don't have five second memory anymore. It's just gone from my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let, let me uh, let me add something to what Tiffany and Cecil have said, and maybe it'll come back to your brain. Um, what what Cecil said before about that it's it's truly a student run operation. I I really need to emphasize that. Um, and I've gotten calls both when I was advisor and now that I'm chair, when someone has said, "Why did you let them publish that?" whether it was an entire story or a photo or one fact in one story or whatever it was. And my answer is, A, the First Amendment and, and case law prohibit me from, from interfering. All right. Now, I can say all day long, you have spelled cat with two T's. And it's <laughs> but if they want to spell it that way, and publish it that way, that is their First Amendment right. All right, um, so that's part A, but part B is, you know, students do not learn to be responsible journalists or, or responsible anything if, if the faculty are making the decisions. All right, I mean, that's that's true. That's not just true with, with the Wichita, that's, all mass media, that's anything of a practical nature. You're, you're not going to become a good engineer or a good accountant if the faculty are doing your work for you. You know, you have to learn it. So, so that those are the reasons we don't get involved. Now, after the fact, you know, Cecil's right. The administration can't come in and say, we, we forbid you from, from publishing that. They can raise a stink afterward. They can say you blew it, you you made a mistake, or we're just, or you didn't make a mistake, but we're still upset about it. All right, I I can say privately to Cecil or Tiffany or whoever, well, I, I might not have done. I don't think I've ever done that actually, but you know, I I can, or the 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 faculty advisor can. Um, so it's it's not like they're completely immune from criticism. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, prior restraint is is completely illegal and, and unethical. I'm gonna come back uh, to this so, in a second, so, but I remember what my second question was. Oh, good. Uh, uh, now that we've got, let me, let, me, let me pivot away from negative feedback and talk about positive feedback. Have you, do you guys have avenues where you get positive feedback? from uh, the community, uh, the faculty, the staff, the students? I think a lot of our positive feedback from on campus comes from whenever we're covering things. Like if we cover the theater department, we get positive feedback from the people in the theater department, the people in those plays. And then as far as the community, um, we do ad reach out where we go the we go out into the community and we ask if they'd like to purchase an ad. And usually by the time we complete the process of, do you want us to design your ad? Do you want to wear, how, what size, things like that. Um, we'll normally get a comment that, you know, is a good working process, very organized, things like that. Um, I don't know if I've personally ever just heard, wow, the is just so wonderful and ex <laughs> exemplary, but Cecil might because he gets the, commentary more often than I do. Um, to, to add to that, um, first, not to take anything away from what Tiffany does, because a lot of the stuff that she does is behind the scenes that just the Wichita wouldn't work without somebody doing that and doing it very well. Um, but as far as positive feedback, every once in a while, yeah. Um, I remember back when I was sports editor and I had really no business being sports editor, but um, I started this this series because it's a it publishes every two weeks, so we couldn't really do every game. Started this series that was just like a season overview of where different sports were at the time, and I would have people asking me about that. Um, and I think people ironically enjoyed that series. Uh, 
because I didn't genuinely enjoy doing it. So I find it very unlikely that that people were were really excited about it. But that was fun. But also, I mean, anytime we we cover anything SGA related, they'll typically have something nice to say. Um, there are a lot of the the faculty and the higher level administrators that we work with fairly frequently on on stories that we know we can talk to about certain things. And they're they're always very positive and we've received a, a tremendous amount of support from from the upper levels of the university and and that's been honestly the, the biggest positive feedback we can get. What I'm hearing person... the most oh go ahead. No go ahead. What what I'm hearing the most um in in maybe the last year now is the Spanish translations. But that that has become pretty popular and, and appreciated. The thing I'm gonna bring up, we're gonna get political for a second, I think, uh-oh. Um, have you guys heard about the news coming out of Kansas in these last few days? No, Jim has, he's shaking his head, yes. But I was gonna ask you guys his opinion of what, what's happening there. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, a small town, I forget the name of the town. Um, Marion. Miriam, about 2000, um, the, the local um, newspaper was raided by the police. They took all of the cell phones, all the computers, all, all the hard drives. And it looks like they did not go through the, the correct procedure in which to do that. They went in with simply a, um, a search warrant when they're supposed to actually have a subpoena uh, to, uh, to, um, to enforce that sort of thing. Um, there's also the idea that possibly this may have been due to um, a local entrepreneur, uh, a restaurant owner, um, um, because they were doing a, that's what they said they were doing it, that he had, they had stolen his identity because they had certain information about him. Um, they did have certain information about him, but um, it was, it was gotten through, through supposedly normal means. And um, they had contacted the police to say, we're not publishing this, but just let you know that we have this certain information about this uh, particular individual. And it, was, it had to do with uh, an arrest record, I believe. It was um, a DWI. But there's also come out since then, the owner said we were also investigating the police chief at that, uh, about another um, uh, thing that was going on. And they believe that was the motive behind it. But it, it, it's it's national news currently. Um, it's, it's apparently fairly rare that this happens. Um, but it's, um, again, it, it does happen where somebody will come in and try to silence the the local paper through intimidation and physically removing their ability to produce the paper and i was just wondering about obviously jim's got um some some strong opinions about it but i was wondering if the yeah. other if you two had any strong opinions about it i mean i can i can say personally i'm i'm a big advocate of the first amendment i'm a big proponent of the first amendment um so yeah, that's 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 troubling, um, but I think it's also, while it's it's obviously a, a rough situation for them, it's good overall that it's national news. It's good that this isn't something that can happen and just be immediately swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's fantastic that national news outlets are picking that up and supporting smaller, more localized journalistic outlets. Um, so I mean, obviously you you hope for the paper there that they are able to to recover well and come out of this in a good place but i i do think it speaks to the fact that the free speech is is very much still alive and well in many many ways in this country anything you else want to add to that jim i just thought it's a talking point it's in the news lately yeah it um the it, one one part of this that that we haven't discussed yet is the the editor's home was also part of this raid. It wasn't just the newspaper mm -hmm. office, and he lived with his mother, who is was ninety eight years old or something like that. And the whole thing stressed her out so much she had a stroke and died. Oh, wow. uh, so it's there are now you know like they're considering pressing charges about that. Um, but 
the the entrepreneur apparently was was tight with city government and and it, it the editor apparently verified that there was a DWI on some sort of public database but then was accused of somehow identity theft that they they had the entrepreneur's license driver's license number something like that I would have to read more to before I would swear to that but um so it it so their their cover was well we we can we can search because we think there was a probable crime committed but but that seems like a pretty flimsy cover when when it was well you're you're putting out this news about someone we like and it's a it's a small town the part about the police chief being investigated i didn't know that part that's one of the things the, the owner had said uh, later on. Uh, he said that they had, um, he said the only information they had about that was on their hard drives too. And those are probably gone now. Um, so, but they were, I mean, it was one of the things that they were, wasn't necessarily starting an investigation, but they had some information about some, some possible wrongdoing on his part that they were starting mm -hmm. to look into. Well, and, and part of that speaks to the larger you know, trend of, of, you know, well, we hate the media and it's always the media's fault. And, and one thing I talk about in class that, that Cecil and Tiffany have both heard until they can't stand it anymore, but, you know, in certain situations, the media don't need to make you look bad. You, you look bad on your own. All right. If if a business owner got a DWI, that they already look bad. The, the, the media don't have to make them look bad. If if you defraud your customers or you sell drugs or you cheat on your wife or I mean whatever it is, you know the the media may or may not tell the world about it, and and that's an ethical call in and of itself. But to say, well, you made me look bad. No, you made yourself look bad. And and so that that part really runs all over me. You uh, yeah. can't, can't blame the mirror for your fashion choices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and that uh, kind of thing has happened on a, a smaller level with the Wichitan. Yeah. When a fraternity is investigated for hazing or, or something like that, and we report on it. Um, back in the days of a physical issue, there were fraternities who took every newspaper and threw it out. And and again, well, if if you weren't hazing your pledges, we we wouldn't write about it. Was there <laughs> anything else that you guys uh, particularly wanted to talk about uh, in association with the uh, Wichita? Something that maybe you had thought we would ask you about and we we didn't, uh, or just something that you really want to uh, emphasize uh, with it? I, there's there's one thing I I would would hope anyone watching knows, but they often don't, um, and that is anybody is welcome to join the staff. And there there, I I always get questions. Well, I'm not a mass comm major. Yeah. Well, I don't I you know I'm I'm going to be a chemistry major. I'm never going to be a journalist. Well, that doesn't mean you can't get involved. Mm -hmm. I, I also hear a lot of, you know, well, I don't like to write. And my answer to that is, well, there are lots of things at the Wichita that don't involve writing. Maybe you'd like to be a designer. Maybe you'd like to be a photographer. Maybe you'd like to join Tiffany's department and sell and design advertising. And and so it's it's really, it's open to all. And I think sometimes people miss that. 
And I'll just, I'll just add to that, that that's that's an epi, that's a, that's a a problem that's throughout this campus because I've also heard um, mm -hmm. people say um, from for instance the um, the local uh, the local theater group they say anybody can take part in our theater productions you don't have to be a theater major the marching band says anybody can play an mm -hmm. instrument can join the marching band you don't have to be a music major and I'll say that to all the students if there's something you enjoy it doesn't matter if if it's your major or not if it's something you enjoy right. and there's a group here on campus involved with it get involved I mean. It, these groups are open to every single student here. So mm -hmm. don't think just because, oh, it's not my major, it's not something I'm focusing on professionally, but something I do for fun. Don't think that that's, that should be an obstacle for you to get involved with the local clubs here on, and the local organizations at, here on campus. Definitely. Yeah, and and I'll add to that, that Tiffany and I are, are MASCOM majors. I think, Tiffany, you're, you're a double major, correct? But my my managing editor is a biochem major. Um, I I just talked to our new photography editor today. She's a nursing major, and not only is that something that's open to everyone from across campus, but it's encouraged for everyone across campus, because truthfully, you know, as much as we want to think that that we can cover everything in a spectacular manner and know everything that's going on, we're students first and that's a that's a big time sink so to have somebody to have people from across campus that participate in this is a strength for our organization because then we have better insight into what's happening in centennial we have better insight into what's happening in py we have people that know what's going on there we have people that know people there and it just makes it that much easier for us to share the stories that need to be shared with the entire student body when we have representatives from across campus and I will say the years in which there was um, someone on the Wichita who actually worked here in the library, there were a lot more stories about the library during those years. Yeah, the the <laughs> the social media. I don't know what Rebecca's title is, social media manager, or yeah, she's a theater major. Um, the there have been a couple of editors before Cecil. One was a social work major. We had a history major. We had an education major. So yeah, it's it really is open to anybody. Good. Anything to add at this point, or are we done for the uh, for this little episode, Joe? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if there's not really anything else that you particularly wanted to talk about, about uh, the work that you do with the Wichita, uh, we can start wrapping up and, and, and talk about community things and, 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 and yeah, cl cl close it down for, for now. All right, I'll, I'll throw this out there. Anything else you guys want to talk about at the moment? Oh, yeah. No? Okay. We we already covered Barbieheimer, so okay. So that that you know, that's major. Is there anything else? <laughs> Apparently not. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have my hard copy sheet of things going on around the the area. Uh, the Wichita Theater has a show on their dinner theater stage, uh, and also on their main stage. Contact them for ticket information and show times for Greater Tuna. And the SpongeBob musical, uh, the bicycle race, the Hotter and Hell Hundred, is happening at the end of the month. Uh, the Wichita Falls uh, Museum of Art uh, at MSU Texas is hosting a milk carton intaglio workshop. I don't know that I said that correctly. Uh, from two to four, Friday, August the twenty fifth, uh, participants will use milk cartons as a base for ink printing. Uh, workshop is free. All materials are provided. Uh, come to Moffat Theater at the beginning of the uh, Moffat Library uh, at the beginning of the semester for therapy dogs. Dogs are going to be here 6 to 7 30, August 31st, and on Tuesday, September 5th. You can join us in our atrium to give love to these furry friends. Uh, downtown Wichita Falls, next to After Hours Art Walk, will be September 7th. Uh, Live at the Lake will host the James Cook Band from 6 to 8 Thursday, September 7th and the G-Top Band from 6 to 8 on September 21st. 
On both of those nights, the Gypsy Kid food truck will be on hand, so you can call the museum for more information. And here, please go ahead and start making plans now to attend Moffat Library's Halloween event, Rooftop Heroes and Tabletop Terrors. We'll have games to play, costume contests, special presentations, and much, much more. Uh, if you have an event you would like us to mention on our podcast, or if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please email us, library at msutexas.edu. Or if you'd like more information about the things we mentioned, uh, or any of the other local activities, I cannot speak today. Uh, check out the events section of the MSU Texas homepage and the calendar at discoverwichitafalls.com slash events. And they say there's nothing to do in Wichita Falls. <laughs> I have never understood that, and I have always hated it. Uh, I can't think now what song it's in, but there's a, a lyric that says, if you're bored, then you're boring. And I I, I like that. I, I, I can get behind that. Uh, and uh, my grandmother, who was a, a elementary school teacher, uh, would always talk about that there's always things to see. There's always things to do. When I was very young, we'd go to visit her and she'd say, so how was the trip? So, eh, no, eh, no. You, well, what did you see? So, I, I didn't see anything. You didn't see anything? There, there, there weren't any trees, there weren't any animals, there weren't any clouds. And so she put it into my brain to start looking for things because there's always stuff all around you and the trick is to look for it. Um, yeah. Little Andy Griffith uh, focus talk there. I think the <laughs> therapy dogs, I think that's a, a great thing. You usually do that at the end of the semester. Yeah, I think, I think this think is the first cool time we ever that, brought them in. The yeah, beginning. that's cool. And that was Allison's idea, um, our uh, outreach uh, coordinator who, who decided to do it early this year. And I think it's a great idea, too, because, um, yeah, people are also anxiety at the end of the semester. But incoming freshmen kind of freak out, too, if, mm -hmm. if this is their first or second week doing something. I might add that Allison is a Mass Comm alum. <laughs> Just got to put that plug in there. And we... Uh... We love the therapy dogs because it makes for fantastic photo stories and it also gives us an excuse to go so <laughs> <laughs> well again thank you everyone for um again uh we wouldn't have this podcast without having a wonderful guest such as you guys coming in and talking about the library or not the library the university what you do here or things going on in the community um and by the way if any of you have suggestions on what we should do in the future or if you guys want to come back at some point, if there's something going on, please contact us. We're, we know we we love to have guests on. Um, we try to have guests on almost every month. Um, doesn't happen all the time, but we 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 find it's it's a better way of talking about things rather than just me and Chris uh, breaking down the Dune novels for for three hours. Um, but uh, again, uh, thank you for being here. And I guess unless you got something else, Joe, I think that's it. I think that's it. So thank, thank you, you for having for us. Here. Thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. All right. And we're 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 out. Have a good day.